after episode three of Mandalorian tried to be and or like in storytelling and totally failed in my opinion i was excited to see it return to form in episode four for the most exciting episode yet of season three and i think that this should be the template just the groundwork of star wars content moving forward let me start with my breakdown with the good this episode elements gave me everything i've been wanting to see from this show starting with the mandalorian culture showing the ranking showing how they train and we've seen how they become these badasses and i really really enjoyed always really really enjoyed seeing my ca favorite characters train and grogu was just extra adorable in this episode wilding around everywhere making me go uh playing with those little sand rock crabs which reminds me of the reason why Star Wars is so special sometimes because the weird little things they could do with creatures and moments that make it feel unique. And this was one of them. And Mando wanting Grogu to become a Mandalorian, start his training at this young age, even though basically he's still a baby. And I really love that scene of him training with the foundling with the darts because it added so much character to Grogu because at first it seemed like Grogu didn't know what he was supposed to be doing but that's not what it was it was the fact that he didn't want to do it. he didn't want to embarrass this little kid he didn't want to show off and it wasn't until he got the go from Mando from um J Din that he went in went all in and showed what he really could do and I really made me excited to see him in action sequences moving f forward the puppeteer work here is great and while all this is happening and people were like treating Grogu like he's a little brother that they never had tragic strikes and a flying beast takes one of the young foundings away snatches them up and flies away back to their nest where Bo-Katan, Jin, and other Mandos have to chase and try to find a way to get the young foundling back while we're uh, while they're away we get some of the most exciting moments in Star Wars that we've had in a long time, maybe in years, with Grogu while he's doing his training, cause him to have like a PTS memory moment of him escaping Order 66. It was really cool to see, to get that fleshed out. We get a little bit of that in the Obi-Wan show and everything like that, and it's been referenced with Grogu before, but seeing him there, him realizing everything, and the way they made the CGI and the VFX on his face where you could tell it was causing him pain it, that was all fantastic and the moment was just really exciting but Star Wars fans I'm not deep into the Mandalorian or even the Star Wars lore like that was the Jedi that saves Grogu an important character from the books the animated show or something I missed because I didn't recognize it let me know in the comments below Bo-Katan a character that I've been kind of lukewarm thus far in this series that wasn't really like I didn't hate her, but I didn't like, like her at all. But I think that she shined a lot in this episode, taking the lead, really accepting her role as someone that can really help this tribe of the Mandalorian, keeping her helmet on and respecting everybody and really caring about getting this family. She always has this edge to her, but she also seems like a good person. But the way they do the character, it always makes me wonder what is her ulterior motive. Is this just a play to play nice and she has something else? I'm not 100% sure because she lost her version of the tribe. If she really just wants to be a part of this one and there's no ulterior motive, what do you guys think? I'm not 100% sure yet. I just feel like there's something else, a bigger play at hand for her. But the, everything that she did led to uh, even more exciting action sequences. Mandalorian's attacking the beast trying to get the foundling back them all flying on their jetpacks and shooting and fighting and shooting fire on this beast and the vfx and cgi for it was really really great and it was just some really fun action sequences that the mandalorian is known to bring and once they retrieve the foundling and they go back to all the mandalorians leader of them that that tribe wants to honor Bo-Katan because of her bravery and what she was doing and is giving her a new plate because that fell off during the, the battle and during that process Bo-Katan decides to reveal that she saw the mythosaur but the leader decided to skirt around it skate around it trying to make Bo-Katan basically gaslight her honestly that it didn't happen and it wasn't real and that made me think like oh this is gonna become some high drama because I'm not too sure what Bo-Katan's uh, allegiance or what she's trying to do but something like this might turn her into believing in a tribe to going okay something's up with her and that lie may cause bo taking over the tribe that's why i feel like it, the, the seeds are being planted and might happen let me know if you guys think 
the same. Let me go into the bad. So the bad of this episode is that it was too damn short, especially after last week's episode was 59 minutes. And out of that 59 minutes, only 30 minutes of it was exciting to me. And that was the first 15 and the last 15. Everything in the middle was predictable, not really well choreographed or written and boring so for them to just give us the most exciting episode of the season so far and only clocking at 30 minutes was quite disappointing i really wanted more of grogu training the stuff that would grow going through grogu's memory we could have dwelled a little bit more on that a little bit more stuff for mando he did wasn't really in this episode a lot even though you know the show is about him and stuff more stuff with Bo-Katan and the rest of the Mandalorians I think that they could expand it on this and if this episode should have been the one that was longer and the action sequences could have been longer and everything it felt like they were jumping from each point really fast and wasn't dwelling on everything like I would want it to do let me get to my verdict so I think that this episode is the template that Anyone that's doing Star Wars should look at to build at least the grounding work for anything you're going to do. Exciting action, slight character progression and backstory and, and development and plot development. Even though it was slight, but it's, it, it made things interesting. If you're going to do a Star Wars show, this is something that you should be doing each episode, especially if it's only going to be six to eight episodes. Every episode should be more impactful and exciting. I think they did a really great job here, despite it only being 30 minutes. So with that said, I'm going to give Mandalorian episode four a B plus. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What would you rate episode four of the Mandalorian? Let me know in the comments below how you feel about this episode and your theories or what's going on, what's going to happen next episode in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you can notify my reviews, reactions, ranking lists, live discussions, and more. You can watch more of my content right now.